Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Maddie with the Toasty Bros, and today we're reviewing the same HP pre-built for the fifth time, but not really. It's totally different internal, it's just same case. Today we have the Ryzen 3 5300G, which is a four core, eight threaded processor, and basically an upgraded version of the 3400G, but the best part is we're gonna test just that CPU, but then we're also gonna test it with the graphics card it comes with, the RX 5500. But before we talk about this PC, let's hear a word from today's sponsor, because we have to pay the bills. Today's video is brought to you by Zalman and their CNPS 10X Performa Cooler that is currently available in black and a standard edition. Features a 135 millimeter annular blade fan designed for high performance cooling with less noise and high air pressure, four heat pipes, and a simple installation that fits the latest Intel and AMD CPUs. With a two year warranty and performance that rivals all the other top budget coolers on the market, the Zalman CNPS 10X Performa should be on your shortlist for your next gaming rig. Check the link down below to learn more and special thanks again to Zalman for sponsoring today's video. All right, guys, so once again, we have a new HP pre-built here, and HP was nice enough to send this thing over. <laughs> Link in the description down below to purchase the thing if you do like it. Um, there's a lot of different variations of this acid green HP PC, so if you've seen this video and feel like, oh, I've watched this like five different times, well, it's the same body, but different specs every single time. So what we're gonna do is open this thing up, see how it performs, and see what it looks like. Open her up. All right, so let's go ahead and open our box number one. Actually, I don't know. What do you think? Is this going to be a two box deal or a one box deal? I think deal? it's a one box deal. I'm kind of starting to think it's a one box deal. HP, mm -hmm. you know, they, they roll like that. They're, they're always living on the edge. We got a one box deal. Another keyword. So, yeah, in typical HP fashion, we'll just go and open this up for fun. It's always it's kind of fun because they always change these. We got the flat key variant with the textured mouse. Would so, you say rib? I wouldn't say rib. There is no ribs on it. It's very smooth, actually. Okay. But uh, yeah, HP like literally always includes a keyboard and mouse with pretty much all their pre-builds. Now, if you get one of the Omen lineups, you can typically get a gaming keyboard and mouse. They're just membrane keyboards, but they at least have like some color to them. Um, we have some instructions, probably the uh, manual and warranty information, pretty long power cord. And then we just have the PC. That's one thing I like about these HPs is they're extremely small and they're just really easy to review. Like a lot of times, you know, when we're doing these reviews, it takes us like a solid five minutes to get them out of the box because they got like two boxes and all this extra packaging and padding. Well, not with HP, they're simple. Simple. Simple, elegant, clean. The now one thing design. we have noticed is they have actually changed, I have it upside down. They have actually changed the uh, case a few times. A lot of people don't notice that, but um, the front, I don't know why, they constantly change the front. Different ports and stuff. Yeah, like di well, different ports, and then at one point, I know uh, they had like some, some airflow somewhere in the front on these, and now they're more of like a, a, a jutted out front, which is pretty cool, so you get airflow in the top and airflow um, in the bottom. We do have our LED down here, so we're gonna have like some nice green LEDs. Let's real quick over the ports that we have. So on this front panel, we have the power button. We have a audio combo jack. It looks like we have four USB 3s, a full size SD card reader and USB-C. I have not seen USB-C on the front of these. So uh, HP, like this is insane how many ports they have up front because that's really like everything you need. Now, typically in the back, they do kind of lack because they put so many up front. We have two more USB 3, yeah, two more USB 3s. This is getting too complicated. Two more USB 2s. We have an ethernet jack, and then we have all of our extra audio ports up uh, in the back, so that of course you could have a speaker set up and you could also have your gaming headset hooked up in the front and switch back and forth. Um, you do get Wi-Fi with these. That's pretty much typical with any pre-built nowadays, especially HP. And then with this graphics card that Matt was talking about, we do get an HDMI and two display ports making up to three monitors that'll all be at least 1080p. So yeah, this thing, again, it looks very similar. And as you can see on the back, this is actually designed to mainly be used with a graphics card, but because we haven't tested the Ryzen 3 5300G before, we're gonna go ahead and test it with the graphics card and without the graphics card, just to show you how it performs as a CPU on its own with Vega graphics and how it performs with a dedicated GPU. Yeah, so Matt, check out that pretty green that they always include on their, you know, sli slightly green. higher, and it's acid, it's acid green. But well, let's go ahead and open this up with our diamond coated screwdriver. You can buy those on Amazon, by the way. You can buy these on Amazon, yeah, they're diamond coated. <laughs> Affiliate links down in the description <laughs> below. Um, but uh, this is going to be pretty typical as far as the internals go, but it's always fun to see exactly what kind of like parts they use. So as you can see, we just have pretty much like a reference style 
um, AMD Radeon card. We do have two sticks, and now we did pay a little bit extra for this. We, originally, most like HPs come with eight, and it's usually a single stick. We decided to opt for two eight gig sticks, so we are running dual channel, we have 16 gigs, all the capacity you could ever need. It looks like for storage, they used a, oh yeah, 256 gig NVMe, and it looks like it's Kyoxia Corporation. I haven't heard of that Kyoxia. brand. Kyoxia. So that's interesting to see. We do have a slightly larger uh, cooler. You know, a lot of times with these uh, HPs, especially if you get like an Intel variant, um, you know, you're always worried about having like an Intel stock cooler, but these are, they're, they're pretty tall heat sinks. So you're not gonna have to really worry about like thermals or anything. Um, now, of course you do, Get say we'll actually open this up real quick for you guys. We'll do it while it's on too. I just want to show Still you guys. Alive. Just want to show you guys how easy these HPs are to take apart. Here's, um, so here's your Wi-Fi right here. These are your Wi-Fi antennas that they hide really nicely on all of these builds, pretty much. I always have to remember exactly how to do this. I don't remember if this is screwless or not. All right, Matt, refresh my memory. What do you think? Uh, we gotta take this one screw, screw off, yeah. maybe? That one screw, go ahead. Maybe this one screw. It's in a very odd spot that I wouldn't have thought would take off. Well, Jax is doing that. Here's a quick reminder showing you why you can't case swap this motherboard. Yes, the yeah, that's right one there. of the, I say, we'll show. One of the reasons. We'll show the other reasons as well. Is there a screw in the front, too? Hmm. It should just slide out now. Um, so we actually had someone in Amazon ask, um, because we are streaming on Amazon, by the way. Uh, can you fit a hard drive in this? The answer is right here. You can fit a full-sized uh, 3.5 inch drive here. And then on the bottom side, they do have the holes, which would be, uh, let's see, these guys here, I think these three, or I don't know, there's another spot, but long story short, as long as you can get one screw in, you can mount an SSD as well. Um, and it looks like the power supply we get is 80 plus gold rated, that's always good. 400 watts, that's pretty decent wattage. It does come with an eight pin PCI connector, so you could upgrade the graphics card, not by much, but I think, uh, what are the 3060s use just a single eight pin Some typically? do, yeah. So you could go all the way up to like a 3060 if you wanted to, and honestly, I think the CPU would probably support it and not have any major bottlenecking, but honestly, this system just out of the box is going to be really good for gaming. Um, could it live stream? Maybe, maybe some lower end games like Minecraft and Fortnite and whatnot, but hey, that's what we're here for. We're here to test all that out. So what we're gonna do, load this thing up with some games and test it as is, and then, well, we're gonna see exactly how that APU performs because coming very, very soon, which I think when this video released, they're actually on retail shelves now, you could buy things like the 5300G, and this is kind of our first look at it before they actually release on shelves. So yeah, let's go ahead and get some benchmarks. All right, guys, now that we have this HP PC all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about a couple benchmarks real quick. Now, as I mentioned, I decided to test this PC using the graphics card and also using the Vega 6 graphics on the 5300G in three titles, those being Fortnite, Apex Legends, and Rainbow Six Siege. First up, we're going to dive into some Fortnite in performance mode using the RX 5500 and the 5300G, and we ended up getting an average of about 140 plus FPS. This is a pretty playable experience. You can play 1080p high refresh rate with this budget gaming PC, no problem whatsoever. The Ryzen 3 5300G is not holding back the GPU in this scenario. There are some scenarios where we start to see the four cores and eight threads of the 5300G hold back the system, but we'll talk more about that later. But this GPU and CPU pairing makes a whole lot of sense and honestly makes a lot more sense than the other pairing we took a look at before with the Ryzen 5 5600G because with that configuration, the 5600G was, well, a pretty high end CPU compared to the RX 5500G. 500 and the 5500 was a significant bottleneck so something to keep in mind but when we switch over to the 5300g with vega graphics we do start to see how important that graphics card is we do get 70 fps average in performance mode which is playable so if you're somebody who wants to pick up one of these 5300gs when they hit the shelves which i'm not 100 percent sure if the ryzen 3 5300g is also coming to retail shelves let me know in the comment section down below if you know that um you can actually play fortnite which we do expect but it really does not feel Feel like a major upgrade from the 3200G or 3400G. Yes, it does have faster CPU cores, so in games like Fortnite that are really CPU dependent, you would have a slight increase over something like the 3400G with the lesser IPC, but in any other scenario where you're really stressing the actual graphics, you're going to be limited. Do keep in mind, if you do purchase one of these off the shelf in August, you can put in a motherboard that has overclocking support on the iGPU, which I've seen could get like 10 to 15 more FPS. So if you guys want to see a video about us overclocking the iGPUs to see how much performance we can get, be sure to subscribe and comment down below because we will be doing some custom builds with these things very soon. But in terms of Fortnite, it's playable either way, but you do get much higher frame rates with the dedicated graphics card. 
Next up in Apex Legends, we start to see a much bigger difference. We ran on medium settings at 1080p, and we ended up getting about 100 plus FPS in the arenas mode. I'm not really sure if arenas mode is much more demanding than the main game, but it's much easier for us to benchmark, so we're going to be using arena modes from here on out. But getting over 100 plus FPS and showing that CPU and GPU usage in the top left corner is very balanced makes a whole lot of sense, as this being a really good esports gaming PC as is. Most of you out there are not buying these HPs just to test the 5300G, so you really don't have to worry about these other numbers, but just for the people out there who are really interested in if you pick up a 5300G PC, how it actually performs, well, on Apex Legends at 720p low settings, you can get 50-ish FPS. It's playable, but again, you're running at 720p low settings, and there's a lot of stutter. It takes really long for any sort of textures to load in, and it's just not a great gaming experience. You can play, and I've gotten some kills in Apex Legends as you can see on screen here, but again, it's not great, so I wouldn't really recommend it for that, but I think overclocking that iGPU would definitely get you more into the 60 FPS range rock solid, so yeah, I'm very excited to test that in the future, but unfortunately with an HP motherboard, there's really not much we can do there. And the last game we decided to test was Rainbow Six Siege using the built-in benchmark on high settings with the RX 5500, we ended up getting 235 FPS average. Again, this is an esports focused PC. Yeah, you can play games like Cold War and Warzone and some other racing games out there if you really want to, but for the most part, you're looking at the lower end esports titles if you wanna have an awesome 100 plus FPS gaming experience. And the same goes with Rainbow Six Siege on high settings with the 5300G. The only reason I did test on high settings is I wanted to just show you the big difference between the GPU and the iGPU, we did average 60 FPS exactly. So lowering those settings would probably get you 100 plus FPS in Rainbow Six Siege using something that is, well, just an iGPU. It's actually pretty impressive how far this technology has actually come, and I'm really excited to do some custom builds with them. But for the most part, the 5300G is a good successor to the 3400G. I think all of us really just want that graphics processor to improve because it is the exact same one as the 3200G and 3400G, just better CPU performance, so I look forward to the next generation of APUs that have better onboard graphics because I think AMD has a really awesome product here and I'm very excited to see how it performs. So that would be finished the benchmarking section of today's video. How about to bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, so you guys just got to see two different sets of benchmarks where we tested one with the 5500 and one with just the normal 5300G integrated AP graphics, which of course with the 5300G, as we stated towards the beginning of this video, it's basically the same as like a 32, 3400G, just a little bit better CPU. So overall, this PC is pretty good for the money. It's slightly cheaper than the version with the 5600G. Uh, when we released the 5600G version, HP was actually, well, not having stock of the one, the 5600G, so I know a lot of you actually bought this model right here and hopefully you guys are enjoying it because overall I think for the money it's a pretty good pre-built PC that is slightly upgradable and well has one thing that you really can't get right now a graphics card so if you want to buy this thing link in the description down below will be an affiliate link and it will help us out and maybe just maybe this will be the last acid green PC we take a look at but probably not there's gonna totally be many lying. more they're totally lying so we hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you haven't already check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros do not forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. If you guys ever need any PC advice or just want to talk to a bunch of other PC lovers, we highly recommend checking out our Discord. Discord.gg slash Toasty Bros. We have a fancy URL because we're partnered by Discord. Link down below. Definitely take a look at our Discord if you want some PC advice like Jackson mentioned. And also if you just want to get bullied when you come in there. Just kidding. That doesn't happen. Let us know. We'll ban. Goodbye. Ban. Ban.